I'm Sunny, and this is... Hi, I'm Amy. <laughs> and we are here to give you the first edition of how to take your sheepdog from shabby to sheep. And this is Steve, our demo dog. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Okay, so you showed us how to start the line brush. How do you... I'm, I'm, not that you were going to go through the whole dog, but can you put him on his side and kind of go through side by side and explain the dynamics of getting through it? Sure. Do so I typically start with the body first, uh, and I go through basically what we just did with the body. Then we'll lay the dog down on his side, um, like so. And Again, obviously this takes some training. This takes training. So I it takes somebody to hold the head and somebody to hold the bottom foot? because they will always can roll upwards like this. They won't roll backwards. Mm -hmm. So if your dog isn't trained, the easiest way to do is to lay him on his side. Um, stand, stand, up. stand up. Stand up. So I grab the underneath, grab the underneath, and just kind of flip them down. And then have somebody help hold the head and somebody help hold the bottom foot. <laughs> and if you grab both of these legs, you're mm -hmm. usually good and they, they can't move on. So it might take three people. And then somebody is to groom. So it's a party. It's a party. <laughs> it's a party. So when we're looking at the body, the this is one that dropped out. Oh, thank you. The stomach coat is frequently something. That mess. That, so okay. I might spritz Sorry. a little bit. They lay down on it. If they're outside and they get moisture while laying in the grass, this is the most likely spot to mat. You can start with a brush, and you always pull the hair up and you start the line brushing just like you do with the rest of the body. But you wanna make sure that you're making that line. Um, the trick here is to decide just how far down you wanna go so you can still see. Now I've hit a mat here. <gasps> Yay, a mat! <laughs> and, uh, and this is where we can kinda of show you how this works. And he's not gonna like it because it's on his belly. Here's wiener. I know. So this is probably not the best. It's time. a wiener mat. <laughs> um, but you pull it apart. Yeah. If you pull it apart like this and then go over it with your tools, it doesn't hurt the dog as much, and they will cooperate. It's when you find a mat like this and just take a comb and think you're going to pull it out, that hurts, and they're not going to lay there. And they're probably not going to want to lay down ever again. Right. So it's all about trying to get through get the dog groomed but also make it a positive grooming experience for the dog so that you can keep up with the grooming long term so now you look at this and i just want to ask a quick question am i done with this section no no why am i not done with this section the mats. yeah because <laughs> the mats the mat's still there so you come back and look at this oh it's still hiding i got some of it out but i didn't get all of it out and this is a section because it's down by his man parts. I like to spray it, A, because it doesn't always smell great <laughs> while I'm brushing. And it helps clean the hair a little bit more so it's not sticking together because that's one of the big issues with that. Ah, good point. And that too. Ooh. Now, after you've dematted his man parts, and even though he's going to be shaved, would you talk about? how you would trim a male dog for hygiene purposes? If it's a pet dog, I just shave around his wiener. And we can show we're you. We're very technical here. Yeah. yeah. We can we're, show, we're you, show you how to there. do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll start you. there. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. my boys who are not being shown and even my boys who are being shown, I tend to do a little shaving down there because it just gets mm -hmm. gross. It does. Well, it gets really gross. Some of us who have their first boy show dog would like to know what you do on the show dog version Kay. too. We Kay. will. We'll show you. We'll show you when we sh start shaving. So again, I'm doing this. You can actually see the dirt come Ooh. off. This is how good self rinse is and why it's actually helpful. Obviously, you can see it better with. It's a dry urine. shampoo. It's what they call yeah. a dry. It's self rinse is a brand. Right. She's using a dry a dry shampoo. Right. Okay, so I'm going to come through, and I'm just trying to get the edges. I know I'm not getting the whole mat out yet. Like I said, this is the process piece that people sometimes gloss over. You brush, and it looks, from outward appearance, like it's pretty brushed. It's good enough, but it's actually not. You come back again, and it's still there. So we'll keep working on it a little by little, and this is way... 
too hard to brush through and it's going to make him really crabby and I don't want to do that. Slicker and slicker it out. Yeah. Okay. So this is where I bring in the big guns or the slicker because the slicker can get in and pull in on the mat much faster and easier than the brush. I would like to say it's because the pins are smaller and there's more purse uh, inch, yeah, square inch. But when you know, if it was a bad, would you stop and give him a break and work somewhere else and then come back to it if it was a bad one or just work on through it? I, you know, typically you have to gauge it. If the dog is doing okay, I'll keep working on the mat because chances are, at least in my case, I might not easily find the mat again and I want to get it while I have it in, mm -hmm. in my hands and I can get it out because and otherwise, have a yeah. I always, go through a dog. right, and so I don't like to hop around. I try to, because yeah. you're right, then you know that you've hit that spot oh, okay. and you don't have to come back to it. Because yeah. basically you skip the whole line brushing beyond that, this is how you start. Normally you wouldn't be getting to this part for a while because you would have already brushed down his side. But I start from the belly up. I actually do start from the belly up too because, and I do it on purpose because it's the least favorite thing for me to brush. Okay. I so always, ready to work, yeah. Right? Okay. Just, you just start wherever and you just do that all the time. But you have you a, a system. Like a system, yeah. like Chris said, yeah. Because then you know that you've done the dog. I always do one side first and I'll do the whole dog on that side so that I know that side is done and then I'll go over. If I start on the back, usually then I, I'm not gonna lie, I get kind of bored and then I'm like, I, okay, I'm done. This is good, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna finish with the hardest thing because then I'm not gonna wanna spend the time on it. I typically start at the knee and work around this way. Oh. And I start at the stomach, I do the body, then I'll go do the rear legs and then I'll do the front. It doesn't matter, just as long as you start a system yep. that you make sure you get it all. Okay, so if you come back up here now, I've used the slicker. It has expedited the process. Again, the difference between grooming a pet um, and show, we typically don't use a, slipper, a slicker as frequently except for high neat areas. Does it break coat? It pulls under coat out, I think. I think it can break coat too if it's I've, dry. Yeah, and if it's particularly dirty. But if you look at this, now I have a mat free area when I pick through the through mm -hmm. coat. Another um, kind of quick tip that I'll give you, if you're brushing a dog and you think they look like they're in pretty decent shape, I like to take a hair dryer when I'm brushing certain dogs and I like to go through them and actually the hair dryer will identify where there's mats that maybe you didn't see and then you can go through and so pull you're, them apart. So you're blowing your dog like a lawn? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You would be surprised how many fit mats I found that way that I thought I had. Mm -hmm. And then I curse a little bit, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. And I stop, I turn the hair dry off, I take care of that mat, and then we go over, I go over them again. Hmm. That's the OCD part of being a sheepdog owner. So you can see, when I use a slicker, I think it goes a lot faster. Uh, just because you can get down to the coat. But again, you always want to be able to see that skin and see that the hair doesn't have any clumps in it. And then you know that you And again with the brushing. slicker, it's still a light you flick of the wrist. Because if you really if you really get in there, you're, you're gonna, gonna cause scratch. brush burn. Yeah. yeah. It's called you'll brush see, burn. And you'll see marks and scratches it's painful for the dog. Yeah, it it would cause an infection. Ouch. So really lightly with your slicker. Right. Do you want to come and just feel? Try it. That Give it a like? try. And you can see I've taken out quite a decent amount of undercoat, which is usually what mats. So do I yes. rip it out? Yes. Yeah, the more off. you clean out your brush, the better, the better it'll it's be. going to be. Yeah. Brush one of my little things. Okay. So <laughs> do I own? Lightly. Yeah. Okay. Lightly. Just lightly. There you go. Right. So she's basically working the line. Well, she's got it already. It does, is it too fat? Am I doing too big of a chunk, guys? No, no I think you're that's fine. Good. It's not going to be a perfect line. Yeah, okay. And the flick? Do I have the flick? I think I do. Mm -hmm. And you can, so the flick new. is more. That's new to my brushing. Right, right. <laughs> I, don't away from my house. <laughs> I don't flick I don't flick a huge amount, but I do just enough to. Yeah, I can see how it'd be a little yeah. bit. Oops, easier. 
Because then you know that you've gotten that suction of hair, I guess, is why it's And you can feel how soft it is. I mean, I can feel mm -hmm. the difference once you, from the tart to, mm -hmm. yeah, it feels beautiful. Okay. See? Yeah. Good job.